Hey guys, it's Deb Joyce Meek from Delight of My Art. Today we're going to be making a birthday card using the Gorgeous Leaves stamp set. This is a beautiful fall set with a lot of kind of watercolor splashy um, marks on it. And a couple weeks ago, Sarah Douglas, who is our CEO, um, made a video about a cool technique she used, the blending brushes and some masking techniques. And so I decided to try that out and it turned out really cool. So I'm going to do um, one set of colors for you now and then show you the alternate set of colors that I already did. Hey, Becky. Thanks for watching everybody that's live and if you uh, watch it on the replay go ahead and uh, still make a comment I'd love to say hi to you later and if you're watching on YouTube um, please subscribe that'd be awesome I love the support and uh, share the video so let's get going I'm going to be using some very vanilla cardstock on this and I'll be having a um, base of let's see what is this the um, mossy meadow so I'm having a piece that goes all the way across here. This is five and a half by three and three quarters. So I have two of those, one for the inside and one for the outside. I need a piece of scrap paper. Actually, I'm gonna get a piece of grid paper because I'm just having my grid paper. Hang on, I didn't plan this ahead of time. But I need a piece of grid paper. Ink on it. All right, it's a little inky, that's okay. All right, so we've got our panel here. The card is going to be sideways like this. What I'm going to do is take some of these sticky notes. If you've seen these post it notes that say super sticky, these notes have stickiness all covering almost all of the square. It's like just not the very edges. And that's very helpful for this technique. I love using these for masking and everything. Um, I'll try to find a link on Amazon to see where I could get those. I think I got them on Amazon. I couldn't find them at Walmart or other stores, but they could be. Anyway, you take one of these sticky notes and you just kind of give it a tear, kind of give it a, a little bit of a wave, kind of an interesting line. That's not very interesting, but that's okay. <laughs> Um, I'm going to just place that here and then try to line up this side as best I can to get all the way to this edge. And I do have some blank spots down here. I don't want those showing. So I'm going to take another scrappy piece and make sure that all of the corners are covered because we don't want to get ink accidentally on the places where we don't want it. I'll take one more piece and again do kind of a, a tear here and we'll just go like this. We're just making a kind of squiggly line. I, could, I don't like how this little bit matches this little bit so I'm just going to tear this just a little bit more so it's not quite as pronounced. Okay, so... That looks pretty good to me. So we've got this kind of line here. Hi, Sue. Sue from the UK. I love that you pop in and watch me. That's so great. Let's go ahead and do So Saffron. I have not done this color combo, so if this doesn't turn out, I'll end up uh, showing you my alternate <laughs> with the colors I already used. But hopefully this turns out. Well, we're just gonna We're just going to go for it. All right, so this is So Saffron. I've got my blending brush, and I'm going to polish it off onto my my scrap paper first and then kind of go on to this area that I have masked off. So I just want to change the color of the background here just a little bit so you can see um, when we take the sticky notes off that this is a, um, a different area. I just want the whole thing to be kind of a dip. I don't want it to be too dark. I just want it to be different enough. <laughs> and I don't want it to be quite solid either. I kind of want different splashes of color in there. So I'm going to go ahead and do the So Saffron. I did a little bit of that. I'm going to also do some Old Olive. Hopefully that's not too intense. We're going to find out. Experiment time. All right, so 
I'll just blend this off to be a little bit cleaner and just get a little bit of this old olive. Again, wipe it off. And I want this to be kind of light, so I'm just going to put a little bit in the background, a little bit greenish. It's very subtle. You can hardly see it, but hopefully it'll add a little bit of interest here. Okay. There. All right, so I'm gonna keep that open. Let's see, what colors should we use? Since we have this as our background piece, I do want to do some stamping in Mossy Meadow. I think I'm gonna use Soft Suede and Cajun Craze. Yeah, let's go with that. <laughs> So I've got some of the stamps from the set. I've got this big leaf, I've got this skinny leaf, and I've got this kind of medium-sized leaf. And we will just pick one for each of those. Let's do this one as soft suede. We'll do this one in the mossy meadow and this one in Cajun Grace. Okay, so let's do the big one first. Because then we know where we can stamp around. So just ink that up. And just kind of stick that. I don't want to cover up too much of the inside here. Oh, that did not ink up well. Well, that's a bummer. Maybe I need to re-ink my pad. I don't think I'll be able to get that lined up again. It is supposed to be messy looking though, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Well, that's not my favorite, but that's okay. You'll get the idea for the, the uh, stamping anyway even though I messed up my, my print. Okay, so there's two. I'm gonna do probably two of each. Here's soft suede with the longish leaf. What I should have done is stamped it off on my grid paper to make sure that it was inked up enough. Lesson learned. And then Cajun Craze here. Let's do it this way. I'll do it this way. Oh, that looks cool. We might do a few more of those. They're a little smaller and kind of fun. Now let's throw in, should we throw in these little leaves? I might do these in yellow. Spring. No, we're not. We're going to do these in gold. We're going to emboss those in gold. That's what I did on the other card. It looked cool. Okay, so I might get a little noisy with the heat tool here. Let's go ahead and find my embossing stuff. Oh, it's behind me. I do still want to use my embossing buddy. I know we don't sell this anymore, but I don't know why. They're probably going to bring it back. That's just a guess. I don't know if they are, but they should. I think you can use cornstarch too. It's just to help keep static off of the um, places where you don't want embossing powder to stick. So I'm just going in between all of these spaces here. And now I'm going to take this sticky stuff off. So hopefully this looks cool. And you know, if you wanted to add more to the background, you could actually put these back on because you can see where you stamped off and be able to line it up pretty easy if you wanted to add more green to the background. I think I should have added more green, that's okay. All right, so I'm gonna save those in case I want to add anything later and bring my embossing buddy back in and just kind of get the 
blank spaces here just in case. Okay, so I'm going to take this gold, get my little tray. You could always use a paper plate or a piece of paper folded in half or anything to scoop this into. But you just kind of cover it with gold embossing powder and tap it off. So that should get all of those tiny leaves only. If you missed a spot, you can always pour it back on there and get it again. Now I've got a little bit of dust here, so I'm just gonna brush that off with my finger. Because I don't want that to stick when I bring in the heat tool. Okay. And before I bring in my heat tool, I'm going to put all of my embossing powder back into my jar and put the lid back on because it would sure be a shame if you turned on the heat tool and it blew all of this embossing powder all over your desk. I haven't done it yet. Cross my fingers. All right, so bring my heat tool in and it will go on setting number two. We'll let that heat up for a second. and then start putting it over top of your image. And you chase the change. So once it starts changing over, you move to the next spot. Sorry, it's probably a little bit hard to see, but there we go. Hopefully you can see now that there's some really cool gold embossing going on here. Now that we have this little panel done, I'm going to stamp happy birthday down here in the matching color for our card base. So I think that this one will do nice so that I'll use but this pad was kind of dry. Let's see if I have a re-inker real quick. I do. Let's show you how to re-ink an ink pad real quick. If you haven't done this before, it's real easy. You just use your squirt bottle, your refill here, and just kind of cover your pad. You can go back and forth. And then you take a plastic spoon. Where did my plastic spoon go? There it is. And you just press it into the ink pad. Sometimes they go in easier than other times, so just kind of keep working it. Don't press too hard. This foam pad um, can take a little bit of pressure, but I wouldn't go too crazy on there. This way, I feel like I'm not wasting ink if I were using, you know, um, a tissue or something to stick it in there or uh, whatever. I'm pushing all of that ink right in there. And then I can even wipe off a bunch of the extra ink on my sponge. There's a little piece of gold leafing on here. I got it. And then once I'm done with this, I can use a baby wipe and just reuse it on all of my things. So I keep a plastic spoon around at all times. Okay, so now let's make sure this has been re-inked well. Whoops, my stamp isn't sticking to the block real well. This is the happy birthday from the ice sweet ice cream set. I love this font. I love this whole set, but these fonts, nice big happy birthday and thank you. Those are fantastic. So I'm going to be using this big happy birthday. All right, let's test it on the grid paper first. That looks good. Okay, so I will put this flat on my grid paper here. Hi, Erica. Happy anniversary today. And the reason I'm making this card too is my sister-in-law's birthday today. 
So her favorite color is purple. So I'll be showing you the purple version of this card after we're done making this one. Doesn't that look nice? All right, so before I stick this on, I'm going to get some ribbon. Oh, I've stuck it back up here. I've got this gold shimmer ribbon. It's really pretty. So it's got gold edges and the whole thing is gold. So what we're gonna do is put some tear and tape. Let's make some room here. I've got a mess. All right, let's try to clean up a bit. So I'm gonna stick this right next to my card so I see where the edges of this is and take my tear and tape. And since I know I want the ribbon to poke out from the background, I'll put this right on that line. Take my scissors, where did my scissors go? I went to the gift shop yesterday, so I had some projects I took along. So there's one, and we'll do one more. This will really help keep it stuck down. So I'm actually gonna cut this a little bit longer than the card. But I'm not going to wrap it. It might fray a bit as they it goes through the mail or whatever, but I don't think that's too big of an issue. Especially if you get this adhesive all the way to the edge. Okay, so. Give myself a little border there. And hopefully the same border at the bottom. And then this will go over the top. It just gives it a little pizzazz, right? So before I glue that on, I'll just go ahead and trim these edges by turning this over and giving it a trim. Throw away my little pieces. And on the back of this, since we embossed it, it does get a little bit wrinkly. So I'm gonna put a really good, strong adhesive on the back. I'm going to use this Stampin' Seal Plus. So I really want all of the edges really stuck down well, as well as the middle, because I don't want it to appear wrinkled on the card. I make sure to put it on right. <laughs> and I always make sure I'm, the card opens the right way up, <laughs> facing the right way before I stick down the front. I have done an upside down card front before and had to go, oh shoot, and had to take it off and re-stick it. And that's always a little bit difficult. So it doesn't hurt to double check. All right, so that's almost done. We got one more little thing to do. And grab a piece of I've got gold foil here. Just getting all the little pieces out of this little leaf die. This is part of the gorgeous leaves die set and I'm taking one of these little leaves out and we're gonna 
put that on the card. So I'm gonna run this through our die cutting machine. And since I've got this mini one that fits right on the screen, we'll go ahead and use that one. I love how these have all of the instructions on here so you know what sandwich to do. So I put this number one down, I place a number two, my paper and my die, and then another number two. Sorry for any shaking. And there's our little piece. Bring our card back in. I've got some little oops, leftover bits inside the leaves there, so I'm just gonna poke those out with my scissors because it's right here. Okay, and I thought this could go right there and we'll put a little piece of twine on it. Tie a little bow. My dog found this on the floor and decided to chew it, so it's looking a little rough, but it still works. The joy of puppies. <laughs> okay, so I want a really cute tiny bow because this is a cute tiny leaf. So I'll keep making my little bow ends shorter and shorter till I'm happy and then cut off the tails. That looks cute. And what I did with the other one, well, I'll show you, but I think, I think this one looks good in this color because it's all neutral and kind of greens and browns. But with the purple one, I did change it with a blend because we can. I love our blends. So I just tied the bow and then I colored it. To match the background. So I could have colored that dark green, but, or the mossy meadow. Now I need liquid glue. Got a little piece there. Oh, still got little pieces here. That's why. Put little dots on the back. Hopefully they won't bleed through. And then just stick that down right there. Oops, it's moving. So there is our gorgeous leaves fall card. And now I've got to show you the purple version. So you have to tell me which one you like best. So let's get this messy grid paper out of the way. So we've got this one that we just made. And here's the other one I made. Isn't that pretty? So this one uses Blackberry Bliss, Rich Razzleberry, and Fresh Freesia. And the background colors were, um, let's see, what did I use? I used Petal Pink for most of the background. And then I came in with a little bit of Flirty Flamingo. Gonna give it a little extra oomph. But pretty much the same. The same technique. So on the inside of this one I put let's celebrate you and then just had the uh, other leaf and I did a stamp off of that one. We, we forgot to do the inside of this one so we are not done like I thought we were. Let's go ahead and finish that. If I can figure out what I did with the inside piece. Oh we just might have to cut this piece down. This one's too big. Okay we didn't do the inside. What was I thinking? And we have to do the envelope. Here's the purple envelope that I did. 
Oh, two roosters at once. There we go. So what did I say? Three and three quarters. <laughs> Hello, roosters. They're having fun out there. This Let's Celebrate You stamp is from the Celebrate Sunflowers stamp set. But you could use any, any uh, saying you want on the inside. I just thought that this went really well with it. So I will go ahead and use the background color again, this Mossy Meadow. I'm so glad I re-inked that. My grid paper's gone now. Well, hopefully this will turn out. Otherwise, I'll just use the other side. I'm going to go up a little bit from center so that somebody has room to write underneath. That looks good. And then let's just go ahead and put another leaf on there. Let's do the brown. But we will stamp off. Here's a piece of scrap paper and just do a little leaf there that's cute that will go on the inside we might need that up I'll go grab an envelope One moment. very vanilla envelope and let's go ahead and do this one again here and maybe bring in the Cajun Craze one. That's nice and small. Where did my ink pad go for that? Uh, just losing my mind. Don't worry about me. Oh, there it is. Does anybody else craft like I do? Like, where did that thing go that I just had? <laughs> Here we go. And on this side, I think I'll bring in the green again. So we used the old olive. And Sue says she the pink is a change up, but you love both of them. Thanks, Sue. Yeah, I um was inspired by, well, number one, my sister-in-law, but also that our Christmas paper, that whole stack is so pretty with the pinks and the pastels for Christmas. I just thought that was so neat. Yeah, that looks cool. It's always a good idea to do the inside and the envelope while you still have your stamps out, because otherwise, you make a card, you're like, oh, that's cute. You put it aside, and then when you really need to use it, you have to dig all that stuff out. What color did I use? And dig the stamp set out again and finish it up so you can actually use it. Finish it up right away. That's what I say. You will not regret that. So this one also goes fully to the left and right on the inside. Oh, look, it's a little bit long. I might have to trim that. Oops. I must not have measured that. So, looking at this side, we'll just trim that off. As straight as I can. No big deal. There's our card and the envelope. And the purple one. So let me know which one you like the best. Or if you love both of them, that's fine too. I love both of them. <laughs> I love traditional fall colors. It's so pretty out right now. Although lots of the leaves are falling. I mowed the grass. Mowed the grass to in order to spread, you know, mulch up the leaves and put them all in one pile. And the very next day, it, the yard was covered again. <laughs> So I'll probably have to do that again this weekend, even though the lawn doesn't need it. I do want to show you some fall swaps that I got. So hang on if you have a minute to look at some cool other cards. I will post 
the, the one that I swapped. I don't think I have a, a copy of it anymore. But here are some swaps that I received. So I thought these were really cute. So this one, I don't have the sheets telling me which sets they use, but I should be able to post it with the pictures later. But this, I think she put some glue on here, probably the um, precision glue tip pen which I think you can still get online. It's not in the catalog, but you can still get it, I believe. Very cute. I think these little fences are part of one of the Halloween sets too. So that's cool. This one is another pumpkin set that I don't remember the name of. It's not Gorgeous Leaves. It's uh, Pretty Pumpkins maybe or something like that. Then this is a fun fold. Look at this. It lifts up and then down like this. Isn't that cool? And this is that really pretty purpley, purple and gold fall specialty paper. It keeps going on back order because it's so popular. This is the same set as this, I think, for the dyes and the words, but totally different look, right? So this one's using paper from the main catalog, the annual catalog. It's very pretty. I love the watercolor look to this. And on the inside, she I have not seen this. She did a die cut on this panel. She didn't add it to the top. It's just cut out, and all of the um, little cutouts on the die show the card backing. I just thought that was clever. This one's very pretty. Using Forever Fern. And it has all these little doily um, dies in the background there. Looks like she used Wink of Stella on this. That's so pretty. And I love how there's another little strip of it right here. Just a little note. Just a note to let you know that someone thought of you today. What a nice saying. I like that a lot. We've got this cute little squirrel one. Hey there. I like these little leaves here. Oh, and this one opens to the side. Very cute card. And then this one's also very pretty. You've touched, you touched my heart. This is using those um, pierced blooms dies. So it's got little stitching details in the leaves. And my favorite daisy punch. I love this punch. And then the wood paper down here has been embossed with our embossing folder that makes it look like a, a big panel of wood. This one was also so cute. Everybody did such a nice job. And I love these little leaves down here. It adds a little bit of color to the inside. Double layer inside. Look at that. It's super fancy. And then here's the last one. This one might need a little bit more room to kind of show it because it's, it's quite 3D. So this one is a tower card. Isn't that cool? So it has lots of panels. Here's the thank you embossing folder. And again, that purple and gold specialty paper. It's so pretty. So there's lots of it on here. And here's a really neat, this is not an embossing folder, but it is a die that doesn't cut out any shapes. It just adds this really neat stitching leaf. So it's a really big die that will do a whole background like that. That's a really neat one. I don't have that one. That's really cool to see. So very, very pretty from all of my fellow sister stampers and who are part of that swap. That was really cool. I'm part of two more swaps at the moment. So right now we're doing a sampler Christmas exchange, which is really fun. So we're all making tiny little um, squares and um, with nine of us. And so we will send out and make one for us. And then everybody collects all the different little sampler squares so we can make our own little sampler. So I had trouble picking what I wanted to do. So I made a whole bunch of extra ones, but I'll be showing you those in a little bit when I get them all in. But thank you so much for watching. If you um, 
have any questions for me, let me know. If you'd like to place an order with me, I'd super appreciate it. And thank you so much for watching. Have a fabulous weekend. Bye, guys.